Good evening, everyone. Dennis Mangan has returned tonight for a second show. So, Dennis, welcome back. Thanks, Robert. It's good to be here again. So, our topic for tonight, I'd like to sort of get get in. We, we've been discussing these men's issues and issues relating to human sexuality and sociology. And can you sort of just introduce how... You've gotten interested in these issues, and how do you think they relate? You were kind of ta talking earlier of how, of how they relate to conservatism, social conservatism. Yes. Well, uh, I think the place to start is that the social, sexual landscape has changed radically over the last, let's say, uh, 40, 50 years starting with the advent of effective birth control, which um, freed sexual intercourse from the consequences of having children, which uh, I, I, I guess I should interject that uh, most people are, you know, pretty familiar with this, this turn of, uh, of events, of what's happened, the sexual revolution, feminism, and so on. And so... What has happened now is that uh, women have come into the workforce in far greater numbers than they were uh, 30, 40 years ago. It's generally considered, um, uh, I would say that most, most women consider that they need a career. Birth rates have gone down so that it seems that most women only, uh, they aspire to have maybe two children. There are obviously differences, in, individual differences. So what has happened there is that women, and, and all, all this is just very generally speaking, I'm, I ha you have to speak in the broadest sort of terms when, when on this topic, but women are, are no longer dependent on men for an income. But before that, what happened is, I mean, women were dependent on men economically, but women has had power over men through sexuality, so the two kind of balanced each other off. But with feminism, now that women are equals economically, they still have the power over the sexuality, so it puts, puts men at a huge disadvantage. Uh, I'm not quite sure I would put it that way. Um, in the old days, um, yes, uh, women women were dependent economically on men. They they women do have the power of sexuality. This is true because the women are always the choosers, right? Um, generally speaking, men will have sex with any woman that comes along, and the, the opposite is not true with women. Women are very choosy, and this goes back to some very basic uh, tenets of, of uh, evolutionary psychology in that uh, women's eggs are expensive, men's sperm is cheap. So women have to be very choosy in, in, as to who is the potential father of their children. This also relates to the choice of women in, in that uh, a, a pregnancy is a hugely expensive event for a woman. Uh, she spends nine months pregnant and in a, in a semi-helpless state, needing protection and sustenance. And after that, she's going to spend several years raising a baby. So she cannot afford to have an accident. It, it's very detrimental. This, and this goes back to, uh, again, in the old days, illegitimate children were very, very much looked askance on. And I would say that this is the underlying reason. This is very bad for society, very bad for the woman. It's very it's bad for society to have women going around with illegitimate children, needing support, needing support from society, rather than being married to the father of, of the child or children. And it also, it also leaves many men without a spouse because... But before then, that they would find they would find a man to take care of them. But we're seeing this whole sort of trend. Would you call? Well, you've just talked about female hypergamy, but there is it's sort of like in China how you have there's a big shortage of women, and, and we're beginning to see a little bit of that here as well. Yes, um, now that monogamy is no longer quite so fashionable, we have, with a huge both a huge divorce rate and. Delay of marriage and um, also the taboo against uh, extramarital or premarital sexual relations is pretty much gone. Um, so the idea is that 
um, yes, there's there's this notion of female hypergamy, which is that women want to marry or have sexual relations up the social scale. Women are attracted to status and power. Men are attracted to youth and beauty. And uh, from an evolutionary psychology point of view, this makes perfect sense. The status and power of the man translate into sustenance and protection for the woman and her children, whereas um, youth and beauty and woman translate into fertility and healthy children from the man's point of view. So now what, what has happened is that since women have moved into the workforce, uh, they have basically moved up in status, uh, no longer being dependent or as dependent on men for an income, but our brains haven't changed, and women are still looking up the social scale for their mates. So the, what is, the consequence of this is that many men have been left behind, sexually speaking, Men who who are in the workforce, um, who keep their noses clean, so to speak, uh, study hard, get a decent job, and so on. In the past, that would have guaranteed them a mate. That's well. Uh, that's kind of what we. I had this. There's this article, great article up at, at Ferdinand Bartimus site called George Sodini and the contract between the sexes. And if you don't know who George Sodini is. He was this guy who, I think he went like 20-something years without, without having any kind of relationship, and he just went postal, and he shot up a bunch of women in a, in a gym. But what, what it said, like, there's, there, before, there used to be this contract between the sexes where if a man behaved decently and worked hard, that automatically entitled him to a wife, and that's not really the case anymore. But yep, the problem yep. is that idea, even though the idea is long dead, men are still being sold that idea so that they'll stay productive rather than just dropping out of society, kind of like what's happening with the black community. Like the, this, black, I know hear, hear a lot of black conservatives talk about the biggest problem in their community is illegitimacy and the children growing up without dads, and that's true. But what they don't really, what they rarely bring up is if the women, the women there are being taken care by the government, so there's no, so the women just, they, they'll, they'll sleep with the men who they find, uh, they're usually like the gang thugs who they, who they're interested in, because that thugs and gangbangers have social status in the ghetto, but there, but there's no incentive really to have a, a, a job, even if it's a kind of a shitty job in order to get a woman, and that, that's why, but before the a whole Civil, before the Civil Rights Act and the Great Society, there was still more of a level of decency in the black community because there was a strong incentive for men to work to get a mate and to be, be like law-abiding citizens, but all that is, is out the window. Yes. Um, I, I would say, uh, to start with, your, your remarks uh, in, in connection with, uh, with uh, George Sudini are, are on target. Um, in the past, a man like him, um, he was uh, seemingly decent looking. You know, he worked out in the gym. He had a good job, had a, owned, a, owned a house and so on. I will, I will interject here that we can't make too much of this because the man did murder people. He's, he's one, one case. But, yes, uh, a generation ago, a man like him would have had a wife or, or at least girlfriends and so on. But... He turned out to be, in the sexual department, a complete loser and, and acted out on that, uh, murdering, I think, three women. And I would, I would add what you said about uh, men are still being um, fed this, that, that if, they, uh, if they work hard, get a decent job, and, and um, act, act properly within the bounds of society, then you, they can get a wife, they can have a mate. And in, I would say that increasingly many men are are finding out that this is not true. Uh, I think it would help that if, if more men were cognizant of these changes. In, in my personal conversations with people, I, and I bring this kind of thing up, and, and uh, most people seem 
totally oblivious to it. Obviously, they're not oblivious to the sexual revolution and uh, modern-day mores and morals. Uh, they they understand that. They're living it a lot of Well, them. they understand the immorality, promiscuity, all that, but I think they don't understand the female hypergamy because the sexual yeah. revolution, men, a lot of men sort of bought into this idea that promiscuity would benefit them, but it really hasn't because... You know, because of the hypergamy thing, then a lot of women they're they're ruined for for marriage because I mean, it's like they say sluts don't make good wives. And there was a survey I, I saw. It, you can see it up on Royce's site that says the the higher number of partners a woman has, the more likely she is to divorce her partner. And and also it's more diff much more difficult for a woman a woman to fall in love and to bond with the man if she's had a large number of sex partners so a lot of these women are just damaged goods and you see this trend of women being hypergamous in their 20s but then or they look to find sort of a guy who's a decent guy but he's a little bit boring to settle with when they are in their 30s to start a family with, but to those guys, like I think a lot of them are starting to realize that they're being really screwed over, that they get a pretty lousy deal. Yes, um, putting numbers to those kind, of, that general outline of of, of 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 how you of what you just said, I think is largely correct. Putting numbers to them would be very difficult, but. Um, we can put numbers to the divorce rate, and um, three quarters around that figure, three quarters of all divorces are initiated by women. And so you have to ask yourself, why is that? There are legal reasons for that, but there are also social sexual reasons for that. Um, and women, women initiate divorce and because they have every incentive to do so, and they and they end up getting supported by the man, um, you know, on, on pain of legal penalties for the man. Uh, divorce courts are just notoriously anti-male, with custody of children all uh, almost always being awarded to the woman, getting child support and alimony and so on. And so, uh, as you mentioned um, on Royce's site that the higher number of sexual partners a woman has had uh, translates into a greater likelihood of divorce. So, therefore, you have these, these uh, what, is, what is known in the lingo as AFCs, average frustrated chumps, uh, in their 30s finding these women who have, who have had all these sexual partners and then want to settle down. Uh, they get married, and then pretty soon they're ripe for uh, a divorce and in which they get pretty much financially raped legally. So the whole thing is pretty much a mess for men. And this, this just has so many larger implications for society. Uh, when you have so many men uh, alienated from the system, well, then, then they no longer give support to, to society. They, they feel alienated. They, they have figuratively dropped out. Many men have are, are become under or unemployed deliberately, um, and and they think, why bother? Yeah, because the the main reason that men work hard and or do some kind of creative activity, it's all a biological incentive to find a mate. And that's yes. part of the reason. Part of the reason Western civilization is superior to non non European societies is because of monogamy and the sort of the social construct of marriage where every man would get a mate because that's then those type of men who are these intellectual men would reproduce but in like african or muslim societies the like the warriors would hog up all the women so you get a bunch of men who were who were really pretty more kind of t tough guys, which is what's valued. But they're really you have you don't see that many brilliant people come out of places like Africa in general. Yes, I I, I would agree that monogamy has been extremely important for Western civilization, and we are moving away from monogamy now. This is going to have very important effects on our society, uh, as I mentioned earlier. 
conservatives, many conservatives, seem to be missing in action on this issue. Um, the the I, I've had back and forth uh, on the internet with uh, several conservatives about this. Um, Lawrence Oster, most notably, um, who, who's a well-known conservative who blogs at View from the Right, and he's a Christian conservative. His attitude, which I believe is uh, probably fairly representative uh, of of a sort of a, a mainstream conservatism, is that well. You know, you should just act moral, act ethically, and um, pretty soon, you know, you'll if you're an AFC, you'll find a woman who um, believes the same as you do, and then um, you can get married and live happily ever well, after. The, the social conservatives are living; they're living in the past. They don't want to adjust to the reality. And I notice a lot of like traditional sites, right wingers. Uh, racial white nationalists, traditionalist right wingers, they they a lot of them are, are dismissing like Royceism as just sexual degeneracy, and they're yeah. sort of they're all they're all living in the past, and then then the mainstream conservatives they're useless because like they the mainstream conservatives the mainstream social conservatives like the religious right everything is about abortion and gay marriage. And I mean, gay marriage is a, it's kind of a symbolic thing, but it really doesn't, I don't see it as affecting marriage. And they're, they're even, they're, they actually, in a lot of ways, they're allies to feminism, because I, I brought this up on my first, this first interview on the topic I did with Lindsay, is uh, there was this bill that made it difficult to import wives from overseas, and you have this neo neoconservative Senator Sam Brownback team up with this feminist Democrat Maria Cantwell on that issue, and marriage, in a sense, was sexual socialism, but at the same time, they also want to regulate marriage by preventing men from importing wives from overseas, so they rig the whole marriage, the economic market for marriage to suit their own their own interests because yeah, yeah. they want less competition. And really, the thing about it is if these men that these men in their 30s who, there are a lot of men in their 30s who have, who have good jobs, but they, they kind of didn't have any luck, in, didn't have much luck in their 20s, and they should, they, 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 what they should be doing is boycotting those type of women who were hypergamous in their 20s, and then it's, it's a smart, then to look overseas to and find a wife who's maybe 10 years younger, like about 20, when they're in their 30s, and that would put an end to a lot of this behavior. Yes, uh, uh, although I would say the the uh, overseas bride aspect is probably, uh, you know, it's not a realistic solution for for the problems of society. It's it certainly may be for some men, and uh, I think they should have that option. That bill you talked about was just blatantly anti-male. Getting back to the social conservatives, um, you're you're right that. Um, Society is, has changed in so many ways, and it, in, in many ways there will be no going back. I made the point recently on my blog that birth control is not going away. Right? That's a technology we have. It's here, period. That's it. And neither neither is abortion. Social conservatives want, are. I mean, I, I'm per, I'm against abortion pers on a personal level. I, I'm against from a moral standpoint, but I recognize abortion is something that's it's here to stay. Here it's here to stay, and we just have to kind of accept it as part of society as a birth control. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that that could be. Um, the 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 point being that. Society, uh, sexually speaking, has permanently changed, and so uh, the, the social conservatives, uh, most of them, just don't seem to get this. They don't seem to see this. Uh, they think if we can just just uh, return to traditional ways, everything will be fine. Now, that is not to say that there aren't uh, many many uh, concrete things that be got, can be done to help the situation. Uh, the divorce laws are. are case in point. Uh, they definitely have to be changed. Um, No-fault divorce makes a mockery of the so-called marriage contract. If either one of the, uh, the partners to this contract can break it at will with no penalties, that, that, that's just like no contract. It's not like any other contract. And so this really needs to be changed. 
divorce laws now i i'm not sure exactly how they need to be changed but but uh, the fact that the uh, that one partner can walk out without penalty uh does need to be changed women as i said initiate most divorces and that is because the incentive structure is there for them to do so they have the incentive to do so <clears throat> they're almost always awarded custody and well i'm repeating myself here but this needs to be changed and so this is something that that could be a positive benefit to society moving it in a more conservative direction a more stable direction yet i just don't see many or even any conservatives uh advocating this it it seems to be just a a, a small group of men's rights advocates that discuss this issue and uh the conservatives act like it doesn't even exist yeah i mean social conservatives are pretty pretty useless i think on men's rights issues the only the only politician who would who would be like an ally would be ron paul I've noticed that the men's rights community, which is, it's not, doesn't, they don't even have a, a major organization. It's all online, but I have noticed most of them tend to be kind of libertarian leanings. Yes. Um, I think uh, getting back to, to Royce, he, he's been one of the uh, main, uh, from my point of view, one of the main um, explainers of, of the current social sexual landscape and how it, how it relates to society. There are, are at least two aspects of someone like Royce, and he, he's just a brilliant writer, which is one reason he's, he's attained such a following and, and uh, such notoriety. But there, there are two aspects of someone like him, and, and there's a prescriptive aspect and a descriptive aspect. Um, conservatives tend to look at someone like him and see only the the prescriptive aspect, which is basically prescription is look at the way society has changed. Um, what are you as a man going to do to get sex? Here's how you do it. Uh, the description is exactly how things have changed uh, very much for the worse. And so it's it's perfectly possible to look at someone like him and gain very much of value without buying into um, the sexual libertinism. You're right. He's like a sex, sexual libertine, and I've I've talked about this issue a few times. Like it's interesting the different like Robert Lindsay, who I, who I first discussed it with, is more of a libertine. While you and and Kevsky, who I just also discussed it with, are more traditionalists. But we can all have we can all kind of see how men are being screwed over in the current system and De Royce is definitely a libertine but it's still there's for social conservatives there's still a lot that they can learn learn from that and how our system it's just become so rigged and i think Amer america's probably the one become like one of the most anti anti male societies uh, yes, it certainly has. I, I think the, a lot of these problems uh, don't exist in, in many places, um, although maybe maybe Japan seems to be catching up. You have the, uh, the category of the, uh, what do they call it, the herbivore man there. They, they, some of the young men seem to become, seem to be becoming quite feminized or, or emasculated um, due to the way society is. Uh, I don't know enough about Japan to go into in detail as to why exactly that's happening, but I think the rise of feminism has something to do with it, and and also the um, the modern trend towards uh, delaying marriage further and further and having fewer children. It's time for a break now. Please stay with us. Come back. So there's sort of you. you what you were kind of discussing is there is this trend of delaying marriage. And what's it's really critical is I want to kind of get into the birth rates of what's the trends that are causing the decline in birth rates in mostly de the Western developed countries, Europe, United States, well, the white birth rates in the United States, and some developed Asian countries like Japan, Taiwan, South Korea. And a lot of it is this, a lot of it's economics because the standard of living is becoming much more competitive. I think feminism is a big part of it because women are delaying having kids because of a career. And the other thing yeah. is materialism is basically dysgenics because 
it means that the most attractive women are going to put their energy into material goods, so they're going to have less children. So that's kind of that's kind of not such a good th good thing either. Yes, um, the 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 decrease in the birth rate has has been going on for some time now, and it is actually a phenomenon that is happening virtually everywhere. Um, even in a place like, say, Iran, you've got below replacement rate uh, birth rates, um, and. Uh, it, it's been said that in China, for instance, their their one child policy is going to be changed into have one child, please, um, because the birth rate is dropping there too. So, uh, I think an important factor here is opportunity cost. Um, when you have so many women in the workforce um, making decent money, the cost of having a baby is huge. Uh, the cost and lost opportunity. And I think uh, that is a lot of what's going on, although if you look at a place like, say, Iran um, or North Africa even. Where well, what, uh, what's interesting like about, about Iran, most people, when they think of Iran, they think about how horribly women are treated there. But in Iran, women are more likely to have a college degree. That's another thing with with economic equality for women is women... women we usually prefer a man to have more, make more money than they do. So what feminism does is it, equal, it pushes for women to have economic equality and make the same income, and not just sort of. And there's not just equal equal rights to to, ma to make the income, but it mandates like affirmative action for them. But the problem with that is women still want men who make more than them. So those men who don't make as much are total are totally screwed yes in, in our in, in our modern society uh, status and power are almost entirely conferred by economics economic status and power how much money you make we, we don't have a lot of, of uh, warriors and priests uh, running around um, or or uh, you know big macho men except in you know certain um, subcultures gang culture for instance but generally speaking, in the society at large, your status is determined by how much money you make. So if women are, are on an almost equal footing with men, yet sexually speaking, they're still attracted to higher status men, i.e. men that make more money than they do, well, then that's a problem. Especially in the 20s, men in the long run end up making more money, but in the, tw in the 20s, women end up making more because attractive uh, women big can get jobs in their 20s based on looks but it is tough for men in their 20s to get jobs and so that's kind of that's kind of how it works out then men make money later on yes um, this, this is this is I was I was going to say that um, Royce would have it that um, a smaller number of men are are having sex with a larger number of women the so-called alphas are are getting most of the uh, quote-unquote action. Um, and then relating to what you just said, um, it, it, this, this is another, this is something else that Royce notes, is that uh, there is uh, a sexual marketplace value. And in, in this age of easy divorce, where um, one partner, usually the woman, can walk out on a moment's notice, uh, marriage for most people, isn't really any guarantee of being out of the sexual marketplace. And uh, men's sexual market value tends to go up as they get older. Since less of their attractiveness is is based on their looks, more of their attractiveness is based on status and money, which they are able to increase as they get older. Women, on the other hand, um, it, it, for women, it's the opposite. Since since their their attractiveness is mainly based on youth and beauty. But I have I have noticed that, that feminists kind of want to make it pathological for men to date women much younger because that's kind of how how it works is that women go for older traditionally have gone for older guys of money and status, but feminists. Do they don't like to see men. They hate it when men their own age date younger women, so they make it pathological. Then the, these on the college campuses, the feminist professors, they tell the girls there that that men that the men older men who would date you are like are all predators and perverts. Yeah, 
Yes. Um, you know, actually, in, in, in the Western world, or at least in the United States, uh, traditionally the age difference between man, uh, men and women at, at the time of marriage has not been that large. It's been, been something like around three years difference, uh, the man being three years older, and that's held steady for a long time. In other cultures, in Latin America or in uh, Asia, you find much greater differences in the age at, at marriage. And why that is, I'm not sure. Um, it might have something to do with the relative instability of society uh, that that uh, or the poverty of society, that it takes a man that much longer to gain enough uh, wealth to marry or, or the fact that he does have enough wealth means a greater guarantee against the uh, social instability. And since we've had gr uh, greater stability and greater wealth, uh, in the Western world, that could have something to do with uh, the uh, relatively small difference in age between men and women at marriage. But you're right. Uh, feminists uh, really do seem to dislike the idea of older men dating younger women just as much as they dislike the idea of, uh, of men going overseas to find a, a suitable wife. I've been seeing a lot of articles around the manosphere there's just if there's talk about will this lead to a societal collapse? But I think now a lot of men, young men, are finding out about all this stuff, and they're talking about boycotting marriage. And how should, how do you th think we should deal with this? Should we try to restore the traditional system, or just boycott the current system and cause it to collapse? I think the best thing is men just sort of boycotting marriage. In the well, in the traditional set and just make because uh, I mean it's a uh, corrupt. I do have kind of an anarchist streak and I believe I'm not an anarchist, but I'm, I have sort of this anarchist streak where I believe that immoral, unjust systems do deserve to to collapse and be destroyed. Um, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. Uh, the, the problem there is that this could have huge consequences for society if 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 young men. Yes figure out where they stand today, what is going on exactly, and they start to understand that getting married could end up in basically all, nearly lifelong slavery in the case of divorce at the hands of an anti-male divorce court, then they will boycott it. So what is that going to do to society? Is the birth rate going to drop to next to nothing, uh, or will we? would we have a phenomenon where, uh, like... Uh, like we do in, in the black community with lots of single mothers, we, we've seen among the, the society at large, among whites uh, lately, you know, many, many women, many prominent women um, make a big show of having a child uh, out of wedlock. And sure, you know, Hollywood stars and, and other people like that that make a lot of money can afford to do this. They can afford to. Um, so have yeah, the, the look wealthy, their wealthy, the wealthy women will have children on their own, and they they they'll sleep with men that they're attracted to, but they won't necessarily need to be dependent. Then lower class whites will follow the black ghetto model, and this will this will kind of continue to lead to the demise of the middle class. I, I, and, I agree. Yeah, and, and and the thing is about the middle. If you look at, I hear these Roycyites. They put up these titles, Alpha, Beta, and Omega. Mm -hmm. And can you kind of, if you go over that, we mean Alpha. Alpha. Uh, alpha. He means a man who sleeps with as many like tons of women, and that could be used as an as an economic analogy for the sort of parasitic elite. And uh, then, possibly. then uh, the, the omega omegas are the men who are just completely failure failures, and that could be used as an analogy for people in poverty. But the betas are basically the men in stable relation marriages, and that's sort of the equivalent of the middle class. And both betas, beta males in the socio sexuality and the middle class are the sort of the backbone of society, and what. St stabilizes it and keeps it together. Together. Yes, uh, the 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 alpha and the and uh, the beta uh, designations originally come from um, studying animal societies. Uh, I think particularly primates, where there's going to be 
one or at any rate a small number of males who who socially dominate the group and they end up um, mating with the most females so the analogy should be clear with human society that that this is what's going on i think uh, like you say, the betas are going to be the vast majority of men, the middle classes, so to speak, and uh, if they're alienated from society, that, that cannot be good. Um, there, there was a piece that I wrote some time back where I, I discussed uh, this idea of the evolutionary psychologist Satoshi Kanazawa, who looked at civil wars, and he looked at a number of factors in historical civil wars and found that uh, he, he looked at, for instance, whether the society was democratic, what the average IQ was in the society, the uh, level of wealth, um, inequality, and so on. And he found that the single most important correlation uh, that, that predicted whether a society would have a civil war was the level of polygyny. In other words, how many men were monopolized, uh, how few men were monopolizing how many women sexually. Um, you see this in the, in the societies in the Middle East, how unstable they are and how filled with rancor you, because you have uh, vast numbers of men who have little chance of ever getting married or, ha or having sex outside of a prostitute, um, and they are alienated and they cause trouble. So. That's what they do. That's I think what the whole, the whole sort of these ra this radical Islamic movement is. It's a way of the of the the elite, not who's, whoever it is, religious leaders, is a way to take deal, use those men, the energy of those men, and direct it towards violence against the enemies. Because that kind of, as you were saying. With the study is throughout history is when you have a whole. It's it's hard for these men if they're being kept out, and then the it's hard if they're being kept out of the mating market. It's hard for them to have any loyalty to the cut that cut that society which is oppressing them, and that, that's a perfect they're perfect soldiers for any kind of like revolution. And I think can you give a couple of examples of civil wars and revolutions that were based on that? Um, off the top of my head, I'm, I'm not sure that I could, um, but I was going to add that with your example of, of Islam, that um, virtually every Muslim terrorist and suicide bomber uh, uh, seems to have been an unmarried man, um, that the uh, major Hassan in the United States who killed all those uh, uh, American military men um, was unmarried, and the uh, suicide terrorists on 9/11 were unmarried. You can, you can. It's another thing besides being alienated from society is that when a man has a wife and children, he's just <laughs> going to be far less likely to want to do something like that. Yeah, because no he wants to ideology. He wants to be there for his wife and kids, and there is this sort of nerd this this trait where men men are biologically wired to protect their wives and children and be there for them and if they're if they're bachelors in a lot of situations they feel like they have nothing to live for nothing to lose and that's also going to lead it i think it will see like a massive spike in crime as well yes as, as kanazawa says these these men who have no prospect of marriage are 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 already reproductively dead. They have they have little chance of leaving offspring, and so there's less that you can threaten them with, and there's 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 less that they care about. They're more willing to face death. Um, and you, you know you can bet that the these uh, these men who are or who are ordering these Muslim terrorists off on their suicide missions are you know they're they have no intention of going themselves. And I mean, well, if you look at Bin Laden, Bin Laden actually, I, he throughout his life he's had like tons of wives, polygamists. So the, that's yeah. kind of ironic. He's kind of part of the problem where he's hogging up more than his fair share of women, but then taking advantage of these men who are sexually frustrated and telling them that if they if they commit like a suicide attack, that they'll get like the seventy seventy two virgins or whatever. Yes, it's a way. It's a it's one way of dealing with the surplus of males in, in society is to, to send them off to war.
And that's probably what China, China has a huge surplus of males. They'll probably do that or encourage them to go overseas. But our society, no one's really addressed... We're, we're nowhere near the level of as those societies, but I think no one's really addressed solutions. And most people, I think the majority of people are oblivious to most of these problems outside of the men's rights community. Yes, I agree. And, and I, there, there's this... Uh there's a sort of a ridiculous amount of optimism, in my opinion, among conservatives, among Mer Americans generally. The, the, there's this optimism that says it can't happen here, that uh, America has always been relatively wealthy and great, and society has always been stable, and, and uh, so, hey, nothing to worry about here. And I, I believe that's, that's very wrong. We need to be looking at solutions for this, um, or, or else we'll be looking at... Uh, horrible social problems well we already are but it could very well get worse but I mean we're not going to see any solutions through the government I think the first thing first solution is to is to edu is education the first solution is to educate men about these issues and for and for men to start boy as I said this earlier to boycott the, the those type of women who are who practice hypergamy in their twenties, but then looking to settle in their thirties, and I think that's that's the best thing. Even if it means being being bachelors, it's still it's still a better it's still a better solution. And the, there's always the option of going overseas. I we I kind of discussed this with Kevsky in our last show, but the mail mail order bride thing is kind of it's it's kind of a scam. But what Kevsky suggested is just learn learn a foreign language and actually live move to one of the one of those countries for like at least a year yes um, the, the thing is it just the, the masses of men in this country are just uh, never going to do that They're, most of them are not capable of that um, sure you know you're, you're maybe your college educated man who's got some initiative and some smarts can do that but most most men either can't or won't do that. Um, another issue I was going to bring up about attempting to heal this problem is the decline of religion. Um, not so very long ago, marriage was looked at as a sacred bond, as, as uh, you know, people are married in church, and this is something that you don't do lightly. And having children was looked at in a religious way, too. Um, but that that's gone, and and whether it can come back, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty doubtful. But this is a major a major prop of incentive that's been knocked out from under marriage. Now it's just looked at as a as a civil thing. So the, there's there are many ways in which we can't go back, and and you know. We do have to look for solutions, but some of these things are going to be, some of these problems are going to be intractable, in my opinion. Yeah, you're, well, you're, you're probably right. I think what's going to happen is we're going to have to hit, it's like all any other situation, it's like with demographics, the economy, we're going to have to hit rock bottom and see a collapse. And then I, I think in the future, as reli religious people are having the most kids, so I think in the long run our society may revert back to traditionalism, just purely because if you look at these more like groups like the Mormons and the Amish and even evangelicals, yeah. they're having tons of kids, and the or also the Latino Latino Catholics who are more socially conservative, and will will be probably in the long run be a more socially conservative country. But in the short term, I mean, social conservatives are pretty useless. The only, when it comes to change, when it comes to change, I, the only thing that they really can do to ch change it is through the birth rate. Yes, um, I, I would disagree with your contention about Latino Catholics. Uh, they they have very high rates of illegitimacy. Well, that, um, you're actually, I've, uh, yeah, you, you're, you're you're absolutely right. You, what I we what I have kind of talked about is it's I'm thinking of. I think it's different with re recent Mexican immigrants in Mex Mexico and La La Latinos in Latin America are very traditional, but when they immigrate, you're right, when they immigrate h here, they tend to adopt the same model you see in the black ghetto community. So I, I, I was I was wrong about that. You're absolutely right. Yeah. 
And, and as far as, uh, uh, the, you know, more people like Mormons or Amish, yeah, certainly um, uh, religiosity has, has a heritable component. Uh, children of religious parents tend to be religious themselves, even leaving aside the upbringing they get. So, but the, but the thing is, Mormons and Amish and people like them are right now such a small percentage of society um, that it would seemingly take quite a few generations for 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 them to reach critical mass um, to to have a you know a more go back to a more um, sexually stable society. And then, and then, but then you get into other things like the, you know, well, Mormons are family oriented, and and um, and so on, but not necessarily socially conservative as such. Uh, a number of them seem to be big fans of mass immigration, for instance. Um, yeah, that's true. With, well, it seems to be true with all religious groups support mass immigration. I mean, organized Jewry, the Catholic Church, evangelicals, Mormons, just all of the Muslims. It just seems that every single religious do- organization is for open borders. Yes, uh, it seems that way. Very few against it. Uh, I I understand that you know many of the. Many of the actual members of these groups, uh, whether whether we're talking about Jews, Mormons, evangelicals, and so on, they tend to be much more socially conservative than their leaders. But the leaders are the ones that we hear from, um, like this uh, Cardinal Mahaffey in in Los Angeles, uh, who's just uh, uh, basically a leftist joke, as far as I'm concerned. You know, he wants to bring everybody in Latin America here. But I don't know that the vast majority of Catholics are, uh, you know, quite so left-wing as he is. Well, Dennis, we're out of time. I want to thank you for being on again. Yeah, thanks, Robert. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. That's all we have for tonight. Take care, and we'll be back with you next week.